Good morning. My name is Reverend George Reiser. I'm the pastor at Holy Trinity United Church of Christ. I want to welcome you to uh, online worship this uh, second Sunday of, of Easter on April 19th. These are the centering words that uh, we're uh, mulling over and using for worship today. All the doubt in the world cannot wash away our inheritance from God, an inheritance of love, refuge, and strength. I want to welcome you to online service. Uh, this will be the fourth um, week that we've uh, done um, the online service. Um, we consider our, ourselves uh, here at Holy Trinity um, inclusive, accepting, helping, and making a difference in the world or in the community around us and in the world. You can find us 
uh, online and on um, facebook.com slash htc or h-t-u-c-c-n-j or um, uh, youtube.com and just in the search bar put h-t-u-c-c-n-j and now i want to invite you to worship as we um, hear the the call to worship for this holy time come into god's presence with joy in god we have an inheritance that is imperishable come into god's presence with hope in christ we have an, an inheritance that cannot be defiled come into god's presence with longing in the spirit we have an, an inheritance that never fades. Come into God's presence with love. In God, we have an inheritance that brings new life. Wherever you are, whatever your spirit and station at this particular moment, let I invite you to share aloud wherever you are, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Something that we do, uh, or that I do uh, in the online uh, worship uh, very early in the, uh, the service is what I call coffee warm-up uh, time and um, coffee warm-up music. And this is your time to um, grab a, a, a nibble of uh, toast, if you'd like, uh, to warm up your coffee, if you're me, uh, have a, a sip of Dr. Pepper. But it's also a, a time to center, to reflect, and to know that God is good. Joyful, joyful love, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, healthy as the sun above. Love the clouds of sin and sadness Drive our heart down the way Give our heart in love Fill us with the light
choice for choiceful boys we adore thee And in my life I put love before thee Cause since I was a youngster I came to know That you was the only way to go So I had to grow to come to an understanding That I'm down with the king So now I'm demanding that you tell me Who you down with me Cause all I know is that I'm down with G-O-T You're down with G-O-T Yeah you know me 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 You're down with G-O-T We come to our time now of uh, prayer of confession. What I've done for uh, any of you who may not have been uh, uh, worshiping, worshiping with us online, uh, for just for this prayer of confession, I will uh, chunk the words together and, uh, and invite you to follow along and uh, speak them aloud. Merciful God, you come offering us peace, but we hold on to our fears. You come offering us faith, but we cling to our doubts. You come offering us a future filled with promise, but we retreat to pleasant memories of the past. Help our unbelief, O oh God, that we may tr truly know and live your gift of resurrection. Amen. And now for about 15, 20 seconds, be invited to reflect on this time of confession. The inheritance that God promises us is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. Even when we are consumed by doubt, God is always faithful. Even when we lose our way, God is able to find us and bring us home. Even when we are at war with ourselves, God is able to bring us peace. Thanks be to God. Into God's presence we come, and from that presence, we are forgiven, 
blessed and sustained. Amen. Announcements. Um, the it has been uh, I, it has been readily apparent to me that in order in this time of pandemic crisis that we not only need to be in worship with one another but we need to be in community with one another and so. Our announcements, um, our, our worship purpose, if you will, is twofold: to worship God, but also to, in the in the structure of the church family, church congregation, to be in community and to find out about um, how folks are in community. So our announcements and our prayers lead us in that direction. For the foreseeable future, particularly in the um, in the northeast megapolis, uh, new uh, um, actually Boston all the way down to, to D.C., for a while we're going to be uh, worshiping like this. Um, I, I want to invite you to stay with us online until we get a chance to be back in the sanctuary. Communion is the first Sunday of the, the, of the month, so we're looking forward to that. You can send announcements uh, by email, by Facebook Messenger, text, uh, you know, send a carrier, carrier pigeon if need be, but let's be in communication with one another. Some of the... Um, Folks that I've heard from uh, this uh, week, some of the, the news uh, from the, the church family and community, I've heard from uh, Tom and EJ, their uh, families are um, doing well. And uh, I'm, uh, um, I've heard from, from them. I got an email from um, uh, Amy Bergstrom, who is, uh, has been um, a couple time visitor at uh, Holy Trinity. Um, and it was it was terrific to get the uh, email uh, from her. Uh, I heard from um, David and Angie. Uh, got a, a great email from um, from them. I got an email from Mike and Marge. I got um, an email from Donna, um, who uh, offered uh, thanks for the uh, prayers and calls and cards and flowers and food and things and and, and um, visits. Um, maintaining the uh, CDC um, six feet and, and uh, through a glass door. Um, she asked me to um, send out uh, a special shout out to um, D um, uh, uh, at, at this time. Uh, certainly, uh, thanks uh, to D. Um, also, just a, a, a quick um, clarification that. Uh, that uh, Donna shared, uh, and that was that uh, David's passing was not related to the virus, and you'll hear more about that in just a, a minute or so. Uh, he, he died of, of heart failure, and she asked me to, to share that. Um, I, I really want our community building at this time to be um, a, a, a lot of sharing. Um, and that means not only sending announcements and news, 
but also send me some pictures. Let me know what's going on in, in your life. Uh, I hear I heard from Tom uh, and a couple got a pick uh, a few pictures from Tom um, this week. Um, Tom says that uh, Mother Nature is keeping us happy, um, and uh, uh, that, as you can see, uh, that uh, happiness is manifested in my favorite flower, tulips. Uh, Tom also mentioned the um, his. Uh, willingness to lift up the Lord daily and, and burning a candle uh, in the name of the Lord. Um, and uh, as if as if that's not enough, uh, uh, here's a, a picture uh, of, from Tom this week, uh, giving us a, a look that's kind of a, a, a Robert De Niro, are you talking to me? Look, so, I look forward to your comments, your uh, prayer requests, your um, pictures, your news items. This is our morning celebration music. Thank you. 
As we come to our time of prayer this morning, um, I again want to, in the spirit of church family, community, and, and sharing with one another, I want to um, uh, invite you to let me know if you want to lift someone up in prayer as a uh, intercessory prayer, uh, prayer of request, or also, and, and, and please don't... Um, uh, neglect these prayers of, of joy or or celebration or thanksgiving. You can email me with uh, any prayer requests or um, on the screen right now you can see the uh, church uh, address. It's uh, um, Box 2249, uh, Willingboro 08046. Um, box 2249, Willingboro 08046. It's going to be on the screen um, uh, three or four more times during the, the uh, worship service. I, I, I hate to, to, to say this, to, uh, to admit this, but I, I had hoped that this screen wouldn't that this wouldn't happen, that that these prayer requests um, wouldn't run to multiple screens for uh, prayers of uh, intercession and, and request. But the reality is we need we need a, a separate screen now just for the virus victims. So I'll, I'll share that with you in a minute. But, but first of all, um, I want to lift up uh, Betty Kimball and, and uh, anyone who's um, in a, a long-term or a residential uh, care facility. I also want to lift up uh, Donna Bullock's family and friends. Um, uh, I mentioned David's passing um, uh, the week before this past Thursday. And... Um, Bill is um, uh, was uh, friends with um, a, a gentleman in a a, a residential uh, an older gentleman uh, in a residential facility, uh, Dick Claudius, and uh, Bill would uh, take Dick uh, out to dinner out of his, the the residential facility every Wednesday. And it, it was a long-standing um, friendship uh, with uh, with uh, 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 Bill, um, th this person who was um, uh, a resident of, of this facility, and um, Dick passed this uh, this um, this week. So I want to lift up. Bill and, and all of those, uh, uh, his family, as well as the, the other residents in that facility who are mourning that passing. Now, uh, uh, I, uh, as I said, I, it's, it, it just kind of overwhelms me that there are so many people in our community who are impacted or have the, the uh, COVID-19. So let's lift up all of those who are impacted by the COVID-19 virus. 
Um, certainly, they, there was a, a news item um, this past week saying that it's something like 40% of the New Jersey um, COVID fatalities were from a uh, long-term or res residential care facility. Let's lift up um, those who are the COVID-19 victims um, in long-term or residential facilities. Um, two, of, uh, two of Bill's nephews, um, uh, Bill Rogers, who is hospitalized right now, Scott Rogers, um, uh, Bill is doing a, a little better. Scott has been um, on a ventilator for quite a while, so I'd, I'd like to lift them up. Um, um, literally, this past uh, evening at about uh, uh, 10 after 11, I got email from Henrietta. I have been calling Henrietta Levels. Um, by emailing and, and we are Facebook buddies and I haven't hadn't heard from her. Henrietta is Henrietta and her husband Norman both have the COVID-19 virus. Um, Norman is at home, but Henrietta is in the hospital right now with COVID and and is having some serious lung uh, issues and, and she was telling me last night how how painful it is so I, I want to lift them up finally um, dear friends of mine who um, my kids were um, in in, in uh, my youth group and Sunday school class and uh, um, or, uh, Paul and Jerry's kids um, actually, Justin, their, their son, was was in my youth group and, and was the kids that I, one of the, one of the kids that I taught in Sunday school. <clears throat> Paul and Jerry are at home, and both of them have the COVID-19, uh, so I want to lift them up. Please hold all those folks as well as the concerns and joys that you have um, in your life. Uh, hold them in prayer as, as I pray. God of signs and wonders, breathe new life into us this day that our spirits may awaken to the joy and the hope of our glorious inheritance through the living Christ. Clear our vision, Holy One, that we may see the promise of Easter in the stirrings of this precious earth and in the life energy flowing through our bodies as children of the resurrection. <coughs> Help us to find the faith to believe what we have not seen that others may see in our living and in our loving the glory of the, of the risen Christ. Guide us in the path of discipleship so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and our deeds sisters and brothers in Christ. God invites us to bring our doubts and our fears, our joys and our concerns, our petitions and our praise and offer them for the earth and all of its creatures. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we receive the legacy of a living hope, born again, not only from his death, but from his resurrection, may we who have received forgiveness of sins through the Holy Spirit live to set others free until at length we enter the inheritance that is imperishable and unfading 
where Christ lives and reigns with you and the same spirit. Amen. Now I invite you to a time of giving. Giving is important because um, we would be giving in, in church. Um, we would be giving uh, in church if we're part of the church congregation and we want to maintain our uh, church building and our, our ministries and, and our mission and help people. Um, and uh, I specifically want to invite you who are um, distance uh, viewers. Um, we need to be giving in times of need to, to uh, be part of the, the mission and the, the witness in this world uh, and, and share with those who don't have quite as much as they need. Um, the Holy, the, the uh, Holy Trinity address as I told this, I told you this would happen, um, is on the screen right now. Again, that's uh, box 2249-08046. Um, um, and um, uh, we want to invite you with concerns, prayer requests, and uh, your uh, gifts, your tithes and, and offerings uh, at, at that, uh, at that uh, uh, address. And now I share with you um, the the doxology, which, uh, given the, our distance um, worshiping, I have dubbed our uh, uh, time to uh, lick a stamp uh, uh, music. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We have two scripture lessons today. Um, one is from the Acts of the Apostles, the other is um, the narrative of uh, Doubting Thomas. Our first uh, scripture is from the book of Acts, um, uh, the, the second chapter of the book of Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonder, and signs that God did through him among you as you yourself, uh, as you yourself know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my whole my soul to Hades, or hold, let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow, his, fellow his, Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb was with us today. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that 
all of us are witnesses. And our gospel lesson is from John's gospel, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see by hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. May God bless the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the acting upon of God's holy and divine word. Following, following Easter until Pentecost, the Sundays are referred to as the first Sunday of Easter and the second Sunday of Easter and so on. Today is the first Sunday of Easter. That's a neat idea that helps us to recall that Easter is ongoing. The celebration that we ha held last week isn't over. The risen Lord is alive and making a difference in the world. There's good news to be had here. There's good news on that day in our scripture when, when the disciples are gathered together and Jesus appears in their midst. I hope that like the disciples, we're feeling the presence of the Lord and celebrating his words peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Consider the nature of faith and acting on faith. We most often consider faith as giving us strength and commitment and the power to follow through on the conviction of faith. I want to talk about Thomas' attitude this morning. Thomas was somewhat pessimistic when Jesus said they were going to Jerusalem. And Thomas was absent from the gathering of the disciples when Jesus first appeared. And Thomas doubted the resurrection. Thomas didn't believe that Jesus had been there. Thomas doubted that Jesus was raised from the dead. Thomas doubted what the disciples were telling him. 
but how Th how Thomas doubted, how Thomas doubted, and what he shared troubles me. I fear that the church today, not our local church, but the Christian church in America today is a Thomas church. What do I mean by a Thomas church? Thomas doubted what the disciples had told him because he espoused a personal and a self-centered and a selfish bias. Yeah, he seemed to say, I can understand what you're saying, but I'm not accepting the group's word. I'm not going to believe just based on what the congregation says. In essence, Thomas seems to be saying, and I'd like you to consider the possibility and give it some thought. Thomas is kind of seems to, or th Thomas kind of seems to be saying, "What about me?" Listen again to the scripture's account of his response. But Thomas, who was called a twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So. The other disciples told him, we have seen, seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. I, I, my, my. How sad Thomas didn't believe. Not, not because he hadn't heard the story. <clears throat> a group of his dearest friends and family had just told him. He was part of a, a group closer than family. He was part of a community, but he had to believe his way. Thomas believed on his terms. I'm talking about a, a me first, what's in it for me, how's that affect me, self-centered, egocentric, and kind of a selfish doubt. The demand that I fear I may hear Thomas making when he demands proof of Jesus' existence. Yep, he seems to say that collective experience is good enough for you, but what about me? Thomas required belief on his terms. When we require faith on our terms, it's symptomatic of our self-interest and our culture's me-first attitudes. And folks, if you don't get my message, let me be quite clear. I fear in our culture, in our society, and, and in our country, that our what's in it for me attitude is one of our largest and most damning sins. I'll give you an example of being selfish despite having more or less Christian pr perspectives, and it relates to, to this time and, and this real world and, and the, the virus pandemic. I fear that many, many people in Florida just Friday decided to look out for number one and held no concern whatsoever for other people, Floridians, didn't waste any time getting back to the sun and surf when beaches and, and parks were reopened in Jacksonville. The same day, the same day that the state clocked a record number of coronavirus deaths, Florida announced 1,400 new cases Friday, the highest 24-hour toll since the pandemic began. All too often, 
I hear people saying, it's about me. And we, I don't hear them saying, it's about us. And our faith is damaged and made dirty when our when that attitude slops over into our faith life. What's in it for me? Why should I believe what you say? Why should I believe that way? Why should I listen to the community or care about others? Thomas may have needed to have faith on his terms. What he could have said and what we could say, let me follow you, Lord. Let me look to you and come where you are and try to understand what you are imparting. Let me be part of the community of believers. Compare that with Thomas's doubt. Bring the proof to me. Meet my criteria. Let me be part of the way I want to be shown. I hope that our doubt these days is a doubt that's healthy and reasonable and communal and related to God's will for all people. Yes, I said all people. Lord, I need some answers, so I'll study and I'll follow you and I'll pray and I'll continue to seek out your will. Doubt is wrong the moment that it demands that God demonstrate God on our terms and I fear that's our American way. The way of our culture and our society in 2020 is a, a path of demanding proof, demanding that God acquiesce to our wishes and that God come to us to accommodate um, and to answer to us and, and answer to our questions. We must seek God and God's will. And that must mean love. And that must mean caring. And that must mean community. And that must mean looking out for one another and not giving in to self-interest. It must mean love. My prayer for us this day is that we blessed that we be blessed as part of God's community. Not that we don't have doubts, but that our doubts are open and honest and show a real effort to study God's will and to seek out God's will and God's ways. And I would remind you of the blessing that comes from believing even though we haven't seen. That blessing comes from the last line of John's gospel, which I read to you a couple minutes ago. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Believe not on your own limited terms, but in God's terms. Believe in God, Believe in one another. Believe in love. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And now, beloved community, 
Through Christ, God has given us a new birth into a living hope. God has given us an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, an inheritance protected by the power of God. Rejoice, therefore, even if for a while we suffer various trials, for life is stronger than death. Love is stronger than hate. Joy is stronger than sorrow. And the promises, promises of God are sure. Amen. So be it. Amen.